It may surprise you to know that there was once a summer when I didn't have a toilet until I built one. It was about 20 years ago, this coming summer, that I arrived in the Dominican Republic for my public service summer with Amigos de las Americas. I still remember selecting this adventure based on the brochure that they had in the foundation. There were these smiling college students um, that were posing in front of their vegetable gardens, looking um, you know, very fulfilled. Um, others that were teaching classes on dental hygiene um, and how to prevent disease prevention in Latin America. You know, and as I thought through it, I was like, there's this added bonus, I'll be able to practice my Spanish throughout the summer. Um, but much to my surprise, when I got to my village, which was nestled along the border with Haiti, um, I quickly learned that the greatest, needed, the greatest need in my village um, was actually to construct pitted, uh, ventilated pit latrines, and lots of them. In that summer, I ended up constructing more than two dozen of them. And I didn't know it then, but it, was, it ended up being one of the most formative summers for me. I worked day and night in that hot sun, but in that process, I developed a lot of lessons learned that I learned then, and I apply today, on developing cross-cultural project management skills. And I would further refine that in my career in the Foreign Service. So when I got to my village, there was no one more excited to see me than my host mother. So as part of this deal, she would host me, and she would be the first lucky contestant to get my, you know, prototype for a toilet outhouse adjacent to her house. Um, and this was, this was of particular importance in this village um, because there were several children that were suffering from de dehydration and diarrhea. And this was likely the result of poor sanitation and human waste that was just avail more readily available. So my host mother would make me a bowl of rice and beans every day, and she would tell me stories about all the personalities about this one in the village and that one in the village. And I remember just thinking it was a lot of idle gossip, and I was only really half paying attention to what she was saying to me at the time. Um, and I remember just being so determined. I was like, here I am, I'm gonna do this great project, um, essentially mission work. Um, and I came back on day three, and she sort of, I said to her, I was like, you know, I've met everyone, we're trying to, to get this project moving forward and, and nothing's happening. And so she put her hands on her hips and she looked at me and she's like, yeah, kind of, I told you so. She had that, that implied manner in her voice. And I realized one of the first lessons um, as she laughed at me in that way was um, I had made a mistake in the process of, of arriving in this village, a total stranger. Um, and one that I wouldn't make again when I go to other host communities and traveling around the world. It was then that I realized in her subtle way that she was telling me these stories to guide me on who were the key stakeholders in the village, who were the decision makers, um, who were the potential roadblocks that I needed to look out for in the community. I had a little, very limited understanding of this organizational structure that I was just plopped into. And here I was using my like, American drive and enthusiasm, and I completely missed the mark in building rapport and trust in the group that I was going to work with for the rest of the summer. So in hindsight, I would have told myself to invest more time up front in building these effective partnerships, to ask questions of my host mother and to others around me, and to analyze the environment to set myself up for success. And I realized that in life, most managers, probably including myself, will require, if not even ask, for you to accomplish big tasks in a limited amount of time. So please, don't shortchange yourself in that initial phase when you start a project to build that rapport and that trust. Identify the roles and responsibilities that you have with those individuals and gain the buy-in for a unified plan. So after a couple of these first missteps, we established our team and began working together on the four phases of constructing a, a pit latrine. So you dig, you mix concrete, you set the concrete, you build the frame, repeat again and again. Dig, mix, set, frame. Simple enough, but we also quickly encountered a number of problems and obstacles that required us to find creative ways um, of, of coming up with solutions. And so it was the next lesson that I learned, which was being flexible and building contingencies into your plan. This was really critical. First, for the workers, everyone didn't work at the same pace. The digging phase took much longer than the other three phases. Um, daily tropical storms pro provided delays in our delivery of materials. 
So what we encourage each other on a daily basis to be proactive and to tackle these, um, these challenges and what we could accomplish each day, just make, basically setting a goal for what we were gonna do each day, sort of piecing, taking little pieces away from that big task um, in order so that we wouldn't feel defeated and we would wanna wake up the next day and basically dig the train. We learn not to be reactive um, and in building this entire plan. And I must say that it wasn't very popular when I was working at the stick site with the guys and sort of their machismo culture um, to ask for help. But they did it, and I learned how to do it too. This was a really valuable lesson because no one gets anywhere without help. And it's certainly an insurmountable task to build a latrine completely by yourself. So as we got to the final phase of building the frame for the latrine, and it goes on like a concrete slab foundation, um, I ended up figuring out a way that there was, to put the two pieces together that just would mold perfectly and prevent any flies or larvae or anything from um, entering that, that space that could cause greater amounts of disease. And when I showed the group that this is sort of a new, new innovation that I had, you know, based on a little bit of a change and a modification on the structure and the way that we wanted to do it, they were really reticent to change. They kept telling me, like, the way that we built the first latrines were fine. Like, just keep doing it the same way that we've done it before. And I remember being really frustrated, being really frustrated with these workers that they didn't take me seriously. Now, was it because I was young? Was I a woman? Was it because they didn't see and I didn't fit into this cultural image um, of someone who they expected to be, you know, in the middle of nowhere, helping them for the summer? I don't know that I ever figured that one out. And it required a lot of courage and taught me to be confident, to trust my gut, and when necessary, to speak truth to power. So never let anyone define who you are or what your capabilities are because of your gender, your age, or your appearance. I didn't let this chip be become a chip on my shoulder, and I gave others the grace to realize that in this new experience, this new endeavor that we're embarking on together, there was a lot of uncharted waters. They were learning about me, I was learning about them, and hopefully by the end, we were gonna be able to change each other's cultural biases and the paradigms that had existed about what we thought of each other before and then after the project. So, but nowadays, I don't shy away when people, don't shy away when people underestimate me. If anything, I see it as an opportunity to strive and surprise people about what I can do. So I want to leave you with the fact that at times in your life, you'll show up to a job or a project that wasn't quite what it was pitched, or in my case, what it was displayed as in the brochure. And it may require you to roll up your sleeves to get a bit dirty, but if you believe in the mission, please, I urge you, do it. Approach it with a positive attitude. Be intellectually curious. Ask powerful questions about your surroundings, even when things don't make sense, probably especially more so when they don't make sense. My summer building the trains, doing that digging, that mixing, that setting, and that framing was one of the most physically demanding, yet rewarding summers that I've had in my entire life. And it really formed the basis for what I do today at the Foreign Service. Why be the king of your own throne? when you can have a village refer to you as La, La, La Reina de la Latrina. <laughs> the latrine queen. <laughs> and you never know your potential until you're tested. So go out there, be challenged, and do great things. Thank you.